What's going on, YouTube? I know, I know. It's been a very long time. It's all my fault. Uh, became super, super distracted over the last eight, nine months. Uh, first, uh, a lot of things have changed as far as uh, making YouTube videos and, and the consistency of them. And uh, one of those things was, was I was dating a girl. So when you're dating a girl, she's that's not real fond of fishing or doesn't have much interest in it. You're not going to spend much time making fishing videos. I can tell you that. Um, the other thing that happened was COVID. The cure. Remember, I said it right at the video. The cure cannot be worse than the problem itself. COVID uh, came into uh, our life in the March time frame and basically just nailed us, killed us. I mean, it was... Uh, you know, I run an event and catering business, uh, for those that you don't know that are new to the channel. Um, and it's been a hectic last eight months. You know, it, governors literally want to rip small business out of people's hands, and that's what they're doing. Um, so, you know, it, it's just been a difficult road, and the focus has been really our business and, um, you know, just kind of personal life stuff. So... With that said, you know, I've had some changes, uh, sold the boat, uh, and, uh, it was, it was a kind of a difficult decision to make, but on the positive side, uh, buddies of mine, um, got together and, uh, we, we went in on a, a pleasure boat. It's a VR six, um, uh, Bayliner, which Bayliner redid their entire line of boats. And it's actually a really nice boat, uh, which I'll, probably cut into a picture right about now. And, um, so with that said, you know, the summer has been fun, as fun as you can possibly make it during a COVID, uh, pandemic. Um, cause there was definitely no social scene going on anywhere this past summer. So the boat kind of saved the summer. Um, but yeah, as far as fishing goes, just, just, you know, I think I just kind of got burnt out too. You know, I'd spent, four years of my life trying to uh, master something that I, you know, didn't know a ton about prior to starting. And I used YouTube as a platform to kind of take you through my process. And, and I really enjoyed it. Um, and, uh, you know, but it was a ton of work. I mean, there were weeks where, you know, I fished for three times and maybe catch two or three fish and try to make a video out of it. As you can see, some of my videos are super boring. And anybody that sat through them, I appreciate you guys watching, especially my niece, uh, Grace and uh, Quinn. Both of those two are my biggest fans. So thanks, guys. Um, you know, but, you know, let's talk about COVID real quick. And then we're going to jump into my new boat. Uh, then we're going to talk about uh, kind of the future of the channel and, and where, where it's going. So. You know, getting back to COVID, one of the frustrating things about COVID uh, for, for us is that obviously we have to have groups of people in order to operate a successful business. Well, governors went in and slashed exactly, you know, they basically shut us down for two months. So once the numbers started to kind of creep up in the end of March, April, and early May, um, they just kind of shut us down. And I live in the Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky area, and and uh, so we have actually facilities in Kentucky and Ohio. Um, so we were living with two state guidelines and Kentucky was super liberal. The, uh, governor from Ohio seemed to have his head on straight, but decided, you know, that he was still going to, at the end of the day, shut everything down, um, or, and close us for a couple months. So we closed and, you know, that just started right off the bat. We got the PPP money, did everything in our power to survive this, mess and thinking that June, July would bounce back. They'd have this COVID under control. Well, unfortunately it created this scare tactic that just pushed most of our business into next year and just got very difficult to navigate from a business perspective. And, and who do you keep? Who do you let go? How do you, how do you make an efficient and effective decision that will keep the company's health in the future, negotiate, renegotiate leases with landlords. It just was a mess. And the landlords are feeling it too, because now they have a bunch of tenants that can't pay them and they got a building that's not worth anything. So it's just a, a vicious cycle. And I know everybody has been affected by this in some shape or form, whether you've lost somebody, whether you've, your business has been impacted, whether you've just 
just mentally have been impacted on it. And I know it's tough, but I feel like there was, could have been a much better way of handling this. And, you know, seeing that the caseload is as high as it's ever been. And we've literally all been wearing masks for the last three months, pretty consistently. Uh, You know, I just don't know where it's going to go or where it's going to end. Positive note, vaccines are sitting out there. Our hope is, is by, you know, middle of uh, next month, we really start to get into the vaccines. And then by springtime, you know, everyone's vaccinated and we can move on with our lives because I know all of us really, really want that. So, but, uh, you know, I just hope that, you know, anybody that's out there that has a small business, uh, you know, I feel for you. We're going through it too. And, uh, you know, I hope we don't ever have to come to this, you know, situation where we have to rebel, but we're getting pretty damn close. So, uh, stay positive and, uh, keep it going. So selling the bass boat, that's the next thing I want to talk about. I bought the bass boat for about $18,000. I ended up selling it for 14, five. This was the year to sell a boat. If you were trying to sell a boat, this was the best year because no one had anything to do. So people were just chomping at the bit trying to buy boats. Most boat places couldn't even keep enough boats in stock um, to even sell. So they were taking trade-ins higher than they normally do. You know, there was just a variety of things that were going on that worked out really well to sell a boat this year. I'm certainly going to miss it. I would recommend an 18 and a half foot boat to anyone that's buying their first boat. A, it fits in a garage. B, you, you got to learn how to drive a boat um, and understand water. Water can be very treacherous at times, and especially in those those short haul boats that you know you're basically riding on top of the water. Um, and then all the expenses that come with it: learning how to maintain, learning you know the trolling motor situation. Trolling motors have advanced so much that it's not even it's not even you almost it almost costs as much as the boat to get a good trolling motor today thirty five forty five hundred dollars I mean I saw Scott Martin make a video last or a couple of weeks ago and I actually said something to him and he kind of fired back at me on my on on the comments I'm just like it must be really nice to have every graph every top trolling motor um you know the best boat all the best rods. I mean, it just became so unaffordable to actually enjoy the sport anymore. The guys that are catching fish are the guys that have every graph out there, um, understand how to utilize them, and you know, uh, you know, have a, a super silent trolling motor now. It's just bizarre. Like it, fishing has just evolved so much since I've even started in the last whatever five years, four years. Um, so it, for me, the expense just wasn't was getting too out of control. Uh, I wanted to upgrade a boat. I looked at a couple different bass boats, but I just mentally just couldn't pull the trigger for something that I can't fish tournaments with. If I could fish tournaments, that would have been a game changer for me. And I probably would have more than likely stuck with fishing and, you know, attempted to get onto, you know, some sort of, uh, money, big money, uh, tournaments if, if possible. So, because I like the thrill of uh, the challenge, and and, and I'm, I've been an athlete my entire life, so competing is the only way that I can really enjoy a sport. So, the YouTube certainly helped. It gave me an uh, a way to uh, learn fishing, kind of share it with you guys, and uh, also challenge myself that way. But ultimately, it just got boring. I like I said, I live in the Midwest, so. The weather's hit or miss. Uh, the water temps are hit or miss. Fishing's tough over here. It's not like Tennessee. It's not like Alabama. It's not like Florida, where literally, or Texas, where you can just go out and fish and you're going to catch five or six fish. Here, if you catch five or six fish, you've really had a great day. So it just beat me up mentally. And, uh, you know, I just kind of got burnt out on it a little bit, to be honest with you guys. And so I sold the boat. Uh, like I said, I jumped into a, a VR six with my buddies or I'm sorry, it's a VR five, not a VR six. Um, and we really had a great summer with it. Women love boats and I'm a single dude. So it was probably one of the more fun summers I had being out on the water. And I had the experience from driving the bass boat that kind of translated really well into, uh, driving this boat pretty often. So had a great time. I would recommend, uh, 
anyone that enjoys boating to buy a boat. I mean, there is still the same things that I've always talked about and I've made videos about where do you store it? How do you take care of it? Who's going to wipe it down? You know, with a pleasure boat, they do get beat up a little bit more because you got other people on there all the time. Uh, we did a Norris strip that was amazing, but man, the boat was disgusting after the fact. And it was basically a brand new boat. So, um, so yeah, uh, that boat's up in Indy right now, uh, stored in a barn, which we were able to do for free, which worked out really well. Um, so if you got that option, I would certainly utilize that. Um, and so the next thing I want to talk about is kind of where the future of the channel is going to go. I was sitting outside with my dog the other day. I was walking him and, uh, a guy stopped me and goes, man, you going to make any more videos anytime soon? And I, I just kind of laughed. I'm like, man, this is, people actually do see me on this, which is kind of bizarre because I've even been to lakes where people have kind of pulled me over. Oh man, are you, are you Jeff? Are you Shaq? Shaq's Outdoor Adventure? I'm like, wow, I can't believe anybody's watching my channel because it can be pretty boring at times. But, um, so yeah, you know, I, I think one of the things that I, you know, want to do is kind of evolve with the channel. As you see, most YouTubers today have evolved. You know, most of that Guggen squad started out making bass fishing videos, how to's, you know, experience videos. And, uh, you know, now they're all super successful. They own a business. They, uh, have, they have all their own lines of stuff. Now they've, they've, you know, cut ties with their rod company, found a catch co that has now taken over their rods and, and it has everything sponsored under their, their title, man. I I'm impressed because when I started, most of these guys were, weren't too far ahead of me in it. And they've just grew and grew and grew. And I think that that just goes to show with hard work, you can achieve anything that you want in life. I learned that through baseball you know, some people learn it through this YouTube avenue. Um, I make the videos because they're fun. So, and I have a full time job. So it's not realistic that I can make these things as much as these guys do. They've dedicated their lives to making them, and and the expense of the equipment that comes with making these videos, and that's evolved as well. So that you know, you know, you have to upgrade your equipment in order to make quality videos anymore. Um, they say that you know the cell phone is the number one camera, but it might be, but without all the other equipment, you just can't make quality video. So the other thing they've done is gotten cameramen. So I'm hoping to maybe move to that where I have somebody shoot me and then I can do these videos a little bit, a little bit easier where I'm not so focused on the behind the scenes stuff versus what's going on in front of the camera. Cause I think I've gotten so accustomed to wanting to know what's behind the scenes. It's taken away from what's what I can do on for in, in front of the screen. So Long story short, if you guys are a fan of mine, I appreciate all the support. I know that um, we're going to do the best we can to make this year more fun. I'm going to jump into some gun videos. I bought a Glock not too long ago, do some shooting videos. I'm going to do some more fishing videos. I'll do some hunting videos. I'll do some boating pleasure stuff, kind of show you a little bit about my life. Maybe do some work videos too. Um, I'd like to get into this more vlogging versus having to make content and tell a story every time you're out, out doing this. So, um, if you'd like to see more stuff like that, leave some comments below. Let me know. Uh, we're going to do a lot of traveling. So I hope that, uh, we can get all that documented as well and, and try to make the videos more fun. So, but I do appreciate all the support over the last seven months. Uh, just year to date, I think I've made $180 on YouTube. Woohoo. Yeah. You guys are like, what the heck? Most of these guys that do these videos every week, and that's the secret. There's no big secret to YouTubing. The secret is to be consistent. If you're consistent, people will watch your, your content. I can't, I'm struggling to be consistent. I'm sure if I put out a video three times or four times a week, I'd be making a lot of money on YouTube right now. But although the next few weeks, I might have some more time to actually do that kind of stuff. So we'll see how it all goes. But I do promise you, I'm promising the 1,500 fans I have or, or people that actually watch my channel, I'm going to do the best I can to make quality videos so you guys can continue to entertain them. Leave some comments below. Again, I appreciate all the support. Um, and uh, that's it. I cannot really benedict it to you. All of my attention I've been giving to you.